Shalom, we praise it to you. Our Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakaka, Dash, the bonus unto your apostles and elders, great most honorable. Well, Shalom to the whole folet. Um, this is a prophecy and news, and um, I got this article from WAFB.com, and it reads Self serve tap room opens on bustling Burbank corridor, right? Baton Rouge, um, Louisiana. The area near Burbank Drive and Lee Drive in Baton Rouge is nearly unrecognisable from just a few years ago. It's home to hundreds of student apartments along with several new restaurants and other businesses in or near the Arlington Marketplace, marketplace development. Midtap is the city's first self-serve tap room. The bar features 48 taps that dispense beer, wine and cocktails or well, cocktails even, through a RFID chip inside bracelets handed out at the door. Now, if you know anything, we're in the last days, man. All right, it tells you in the book of Hebrews, the first chapter, the most high and, um, in times past, in these sundry days are spoke by the mouths of prophets. And this is, the st to, in these last days, the most high is doing the same thing. He ain't changed, all right? It's the same thing. The most high is the same. He, he changed, he changed if not, man. The mouths of the prophets are being, are spoke, are, are speaking in these last days. Amos um, 3 and 7 tells you, um, how could I forget this, man? Um, secret, um, excuse me. Oh, okay, um, bear with me. Amos 3 and 7, surely the Lord power will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants of prophets. And as it tells you in the book of um, Jeremiah 28 and 8, it tells you that um, the Most High always speaks out against kingdoms of evil pestilence. Um, he, he will raise up a prophet to speak out against it, man. So this is the same thing that's happening in these last days, all right? And this is the RFID chip. The why this article holds bears so much significance is because the RFID chip is the mark of the beast in the book of Revelations. The fact that it'll be implanted inside of the right inside of the bodies of the people, that is the mark of the beast. Okay. Now, this mid tap that's opened up in Louisiana, in um, Baton Rouge, basically the reason why it's opening up. All right, is is it's a perfect layup alley for the for the um RFI for the mark of the beast. All right, whereby people will start taking chips into their hand for access or for perks of this nature. All right, where they won't need to receive a bracelet at the door. They'll just um their biometrics will put a pair up the moment they step into the store. A self service tap room is a new wave. And we want to bring that new culture to Baton Rouge, said owner Rick Patel. Patel spent a year and a half developing the concept. He considered several locations before settling on the corner of Burbank and Lee. We went to Mid City, to LSU, to Arlington Marketplace, and it feels great to see to see the final product, he said. Anchored by Rue's supermarket, the sprawling development features restaurants, coffee shops, and other businesses like Hale and Nail Saloons. The marketplace, all right? Where everything is sent upon in every kingdom, because that's where a lot of commerce and, and business is made traffic. Atomic Burger out of the out of New Orleans open next door along, and that's what um what was um the prophecy in the book of is it Ezekiel seventeen? It speaks of a, a place of great traffic. That's talking about the land of America. All right. Along with another retail strip featuring Rotolo's Craft and Crust and retro themed diner called Highway 55, I'm guessing. And that, that's another another scripture that comes to mind. And that's why capitalism is such a big thing in America. Why? Because it's for that, the sake of it being a land of traffic, much merchandise, as it tells you in Revelations 18. The last few years, we've had a lot of under, undeveloped land really smack in the middle of town, says Smith Summers, founder of the Highland Group. A real estate and marketing firm, Summers said the proximity to LSU is the main reason developers are so interested in this area. Yes, yeah, students, as you know, 
university is a big uh, a, a, a big um, form of robbery basically it's a form of robbery all right <laughs> of these uh, of the young people throughout the world in the west all right and it's in this case at LSU these um these students after doing hours on end of um study what they want to do they want to let their hair down man so they it, it will lead them to mass con- not mass but consum- consuming things man you know to unwind going to restaurants retailers etc etc different experiences and that's why this is being done man it will always kind it always kind of be the center of Baton Rouge and anything around LSU will just really hold its value and just continue to grow and prosper he said at 56.5 million the sale of Wildwood student apartments was the city's most expensive commercial deal of 2018 according to the Baton Rouge business report hundreds of other units have also popped up along Ben Hur Road oh Ben um but it's it's not just the college crowd moving in. We've got student living doubled doubled in the mix, but we've also got some really great neighbors backed up to some of to some of this stuff. Riverbend, a perfect example, very close to LSU. But it's always been a really solid neighborhood, some has explained. As new neighbors go up, folks behind Midtap hope to attract a young professional crowd. And basically you know, the young professional crowd are, are who? The graduates of LSU, um, since they're in the, they're right there, they'll be comfortable in the area. They'll they'll adapt to it. And they'll see the nice houses. They'll they'll wanna, you know, aspire to living in that neighborhood since they adjust to it, and that's what they're really saying through the young professional crowd. With the, excuse me. Okay, with the full kitchen and. Good curb appeal. Patel says the location is an asset to his business. Business, business. <laughs> the start here early is a good opportunity to grow. He said, Midtap will hold its grand opening Friday, April twenty sixth. So that's next week, I believe. Yep, next week Friday they're gonna open up. So you know this is prophecy, um, that's coming to effect. And look, man. I, I'm gonna read. I'm just gonna read one scripture just to, you know, nip it all in the bud. <sighs> this is Habakkuk two and three. Actually, I'll read from one down to three. Habakkuk two and one. All right. I will stand upon my watch, and set me upon the tower. Now, in the age world, you have watchmen that will be in a watchtower that basically preside over a city. Okay, a walled city and basically be appointed to different watches to watch out for the enemy or any form of contact from anyone outside of the city to determine how what means of um, action needs to be taken or just for notification to the elders of the city. All right. And we'll watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Okay. So we're standing upon our watch. We have an outline of the things we have to watch out for. And we have to act accordingly when we see the things being um, shown. But guess what? Even though we're waiting, really, we're not waiting idly. We're waiting, we're waiting actively, as in the actively, you know, utilizing the, the the talent that we've been given to gain much more, gain interest, and it basically re- gain interest and reinvest on our talent and compound that that that, that interest, man, and make good on our talent. So that when this time comes, all right, the time of the time that we're watching out for, we we are prepared for it, okay, through the spirit of Yahweh And the Lord Yahweh answered me and said, "Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it." All right, so the vision's been written down on what the scripture, the Bible, the holy scriptures. All right, and that's why when we read these scriptures and with understanding. We're like, we're enable us to run and to understand, okay? Um, the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of the Most High, okay? The spirit that quickeneth. Um, that's the scripture I actually wanted to quote. The spirit that quick, quickeneth, flesh profit of nothing, but the spirit basically is the one that gives us, you know, that makes good for us. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak 
and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Alright? So it, it, it's surely going to come, it won't tarry. So all these things that are playing out upon the earth in different cities, lands and uh, towns and whatnot, they're all gearing towards this new world order, man. And you people that scoff out there, just because you ain't seeing it um, come in the speed that you want it, the capacity that you want it to come in, it doesn't mean it ain't going to happen, man. Um, Romans 3 and 3, it tells you, man, for what if some um, do not believe, shall it make the faith of the Most High without effect? All right, shall it make our faith without effect? Our belief and our knowing of Yahweh Barsham Yahweh Shai's words come into effect. Is that going to make our faith fail? No, all right, because these things are happening. And really and truly, it could happen at a drop of a hat, man. All you need is one false flag and everything's changing up. And we ain't gonna be we ain't got the muscle to do none of that. We we have a spiritual warfare that we're we're bound by at this point in time, man. We ain't got no time to be buying no weaponry and doing no foolishness like that. The weapons of our warfare are not carnival but sp car spiritual slucky are not carnal but spiritual to the pulling down of strongholds. We're 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 engaged in a in a battle <laughs> of good versus evil through spiritual warfare. Okay, and these things are gonna happen, man. Esau has these things lined up and in effect as we speak. All right. So with that, I pray you're edified. Shalom.